Well, hello again from Kingston. I may be guilty of saying too frequently what an extraordinary week it's been, but this week we really have passed some amazing landmarks. Before we go into the update, I want to say a sincere thank you to everybody on the bridge who rendered me terrific assistance this week. It's very much appreciated. If you like the videos, please hit like and consider subscribing. I'll see you at the end. Thanks for watching. We'll start this week on the West End, where Barr have continued to install drainage and a new water main. It was important to stabilise the utility pole while work continued. Windy conditions on Tuesday had little effect on the work. By Thursday, while the trench was still being widened to accommodate other infrastructure items, the time had arrived to run cleaning swabs through the new water main and then to pressure test it. In the comparative quiet of Friday afternoon, it could be seen that the water main was capped and awaiting further service. A review of this week's work on the West End would not be complete without mentioning Sousa Redimix contribution to new sidewalks and curbs. And all the concrete poured on site is rigorously tested independently. All the concrete has been delivered, there's still the removal of the forms. As the week began, concrete forms for an extension to the moment wall beyond the west abutment could be seen. This would prove to be one of several sites receiving concrete on Friday. As we entered the weekend, the wall was curing nicely under wrap. The East End was no less busy this week. Beacon Light arrived to install much new signage, some of it demanding new posts to carry it. The capable team from Black and MacDonald was a regular presence too, installing new poles and traffic signals and the pedestrian controls in the area around Point St. Mark Drive. And at long last, they removed the last of the old utility poles from the area. For many people, the most satisfying work this week would undoubtedly have been the work of hydro seeding conducted by Sharp Landscaping. It could be as much as a couple of weeks before the first grass begins to appear. But the amount of ground covered can be seen quite clearly here. And on these hot summer days, it's good to know that the company is committed to watering regularly. It's been apparent for a week or two, but the last major effort for our stalwart iron workers is on spans 21 and 22. As they continued their demanding, painstaking work, I had the privilege to visit them this week on those spans. It was an especially important visit because one or two who have been here from the start left this week. There's considerable skill and dexterity involved in working with reinforcing rod. Working the craft demands considerable attention to detail and patience. It certainly doesn't hurt to have a strong back and a sense of humour too. And don't let anybody tell you that it's a club for men only. 
you'll get a pretty robust response from some of the women who do excellent work. Whilst I was on the span, I had the opportunity to talk to Dale, who was demonstrating how much attention is paid to even the smallest item on the bridge. We've already seen concrete poured by Sousa and on the moment wall, but those were not the only opportunities to watch this week. It came as no great surprise to see the concrete slab for the east abutment poured this week on Monday. On the same afternoon, now able to run along the bridge, Ready Mix Trucks delivered concrete to the wall on span 10. Thursday saw the Wuis Brothers concrete pumper arrive for a pour on the diaphragm at span 15. So tightly packed are the reinforcing rods that hydraulic wedges have to be used to ease them apart to allow the concrete access. The pour continued to lay slab on the span. And Friday became a big day with more work done to pour walls, a fill to finish the expansion joint on Pier 12, and of course the moment wall. But we've saved what some may think is the best till last. On Monday the wooden deck sections from the trestle were rafted and they've become what is essentially a working platform. On Tuesday, the green steel supporting girders from the first span that you see here were removed, leaving this scene on Wednesday morning. The bent or crossbeam was removed. Then, under the most careful control, a massive vibrating hammer was lowered to seize the pile. restraining safety lift cable is also attached. Once the hammer is activated you can actually see the gravel jump and the pile tremble. Then it becomes a matter of a steady controlled pull to remove it. It's withdrawn almost inch by inch. It's usually necessary to cut piles in half meeting the 45 foot limit for disposal. By Friday afternoon, all the deck sections and the girders of the second span had been removed, creating the situation where on Monday morning it will be possible to remove the next two piles. And the story doesn't end there, because an excavator is already in position, and on Friday a small fleet of trucks is already taking gravel the East Lay Down. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly ready for some wildlife. Well, thanks again for watching the update. I really appreciate it, and I have a confession to make. Next week, for two weeks, after two years of restrictions from COVID, I'm off to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, to work on the flight line operations area. Sorry about that, but I will be back in August. And if you don't know what flight line operations do, 
then I'll leave a link in the description below and you can uh, see a video I made nine years ago about our work. Thanks for the following and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.